Hi everyone. So today I have a special guest right here again. Please welcome Win Charles with me, and she's amazing. So she has many things, many talents, and she do many stuff online. And you can see her very active online as well. So please welcome and get to know her more with me today. Thanks for joining me today, Win. Thank you guys for having me on, and I'll teach you everything I know about <laughs> my gifts and talents. Along with managing a neurological disability, aka cerebral palsy, which I also consider a gift and talent. Yeah, by the way, before we start, we have the same hairstyle today. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, we didn't match by that, no, but well, luckily, we, we shared something today. <laughs> yes, yes. So, in, tell me a little bit or tell my audience a little bit about who you were when you were younger. Well, I was active, um, active, always saw myself as abled bodied. I didn't realize, well, I didn't realize I had cerebral palsy until I was in seventh grade. In seventh grade, I, my mom, she did it in a very odd way, and I wanted to, I wanted to go on the rock when she told me, because she, I guess, I don't know, was it the night before they had, my parents had the, how are we going to tell when that she has a disability conversation? Because I was, even though I knew that something was wrong with me, I quickly discovered that one when I um, was six years old and couldn't kick a soccer ball straight. And then the so soccer ball went sideways because my foot went sideways. Uh -huh. And so I was a, um, I was a pretty smart cookie to figure out, yes, something was wrong with my body. But I didn't know until um, seventh grade that it was cerebral palsy. And then I lost, so my mom tells me that, my mom tells me, and I distinctly remember when she told me, she um, drove me to school one day and then she stops at the bottom of the driveway and looks at me straight in the face and says, I have something to tell you. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Here's the aspects that I was waiting for. And she goes, you have a condition called CP, but we still love you and all that. Now go have a nice day. I'm like, and she literally said, you have CP, now go have a nice day. I'm like, yeah. So, you just told me something that yeah. would change my life forever. And then, um, and then, fast forward, I finish, um, I finish elementary school. I finish high school, I, but in the beginning of my freshman year in high school, I actually Googled what is CP, and oh boy, and then I, I went down the rabbit hole with that, and found that one out, um, found what CP actually was by Google, and it, it made me sad because I'm like, oh boy, now we're dealing with a huge complex disability that I didn't even know about. And then in 2010, I lost my mom. She passed away. And then in 2000, May 19th of 2019, I lost my dad. He passed away. And then, all of a sudden, my world got rocked, 
and I am living in my house with help and all of a sudden I go to physical therapy one day and I ask a physical therapist who knows me and I ask a PT student I said now I don't know what possessed me to ask this question but my question was do you consider cerebral palsy a bone and joint condition or a neurological condition mm. I I didn't know and I was going I asked them and they both looked at me straight in the face and they said when you have a neurological condition and I after that I just probably burst into tears I don't remember what I did and I made it to physical therapy <laughs> but um, and then I called a good friend who actually works with me as a NIA capacity and I said listen this is what I just found out D did you know and you didn't want to tell me and she goes yes I knew and I said well, why didn't you sit down and tell me because at the time I was struggling with why I needed so much help why I needed 24 hour care and um, that's why and it still makes me cry to this day because um, I didn't know I don't I didn't know now that being said I think that I don't know whether my parents were in denial or they I don't know what now I know that my mom had several miscarriages before she had me which I'm a miracle baby in more ways than one and it makes complete sense why she said to me one day my biological mom said to me I'm only having one child and that's it and I knew she had a miscarriage but a miscarriage turned into about six miscarriages before she had me and then on top of everything else she has a child going in the room I almost got killed straight from the get-go because um, the she went um, in and had uh, amniocentesis we believe that somehow they um, messed up on the amniocentesis and so we we had that and then OBGYN diagnosed her with Braxton Hicks diagnosed my mom with Braxton Hicks luckily her girlfriend who had nothing to do with OBGYN -E, who she was just coming over to say hi and the girlfriend goes honey that's not Braxton Hicks you need to get to the hospital like now and we need to get your husband involved we need to get doctors involved you're in labor with win and yeah so I almost got killed straight from the get-go wow maybe she'll yeah and so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I'm speechless right here. So 
And after that, can you carry on? Uh, I'm still want to know carry on. And after that, yeah. I well, I was supposed to be born in September. Completely able body. I landed up being born in June. I spent six months from June to December in a neonatal intensive care unit, whereupon I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. I also have a traumatic brain injury on top of cerebral palsy. Right. How that makes you feel right now, looking back then, the time that you were growing up? Well, I wish that my parents would have sat me down and said, look, you have this, this, and this. This is why you need 24-hour care. And then you have this, but we still love you. And so I was a very privileged kid. I, um, I'm blessed beyond belief, but at the same time, I wish my parents were honest with me. Mm. Right. But isn't that helps you to be more normal because you don't know? Yes, but, um, at the same time, if I ever got bullied, which I never, ever, never, ever, never, ever did, um, got bullied, and I couldn't have spoken up for myself mm -hmm. because I didn't know what was wrong with me. Ah. So never, I never got bullied. Thank God I never got bullied. But I, I was teaching kids back in the 90s um, about cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. How old are you right now, if I may? I am 33 years old. Oh, you still look very young, though, by the way. I look because I look 18. I get that all the time. <laughs> they go, when are you 18? And I get, I get that all the time. I get I look very young. Yeah, you are. I confirmed that. Another person. Uh, yeah. I, um, I, I look extremely young. Yeah, that's a good thing. By the way, did you join the triathlon as well? Yes, I did. Oh. I tried the triathlon. Well, didn't work. Was a complete disaster. But I am the first woman with cerebral palsy to compete in the Kona Ironman. Yeah, that's already amazing. <laughs> I just don't want to think about it, even myself to join. Well, what makes you make that decision to join a triathlon? I, I was, I, to be blunt mm. and be honest, I was forced into it. Oh, why? It wasn't my decision. It was my teammates' decision. Ah, right. And um, now looking back on it, I wish I said no. Because my, I remember sitting in my office, the office that were doing this interview from today. And I remember picking up the phone in 2010, and it was my cousin on the other end. And said, she said, I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise for you. I have a surprise for you. And so we get talking. She still says, I have a surprise for you. And I go, just spit it out, would you please? And just tell me what it is so I know what I'm getting myself into and what whether some, I hope someone didn't die on me. And so she goes, do you want to do triathlons with me? And I said to her, 
I said, quote, you are nuts. I'm not in the physical shape. And you are nuts. And she hung up the phone. I agreed to it. Oh. I thought it was more going to be awareness for cerebral palsy. No. She she just wanted to use me because she just wanted, I guess, triathletes in general are so self-centered that they focus on the winning of triathlons so much that they can't see the forest for the trees around them. Now, I have spoken to professional trainers, high-level trainers about this, and they agree with me. And I will never do triathlons again. I may do marathon, but if, but if I do a triathlon again, it would be um, have to be with a completely different teammate to um, do it. So, what is the experience then? Like, what was the experience? Awful. Oh, I lost weight. I um, I didn't get the support. I got. I didn't get the support from my teammate that I wanted, and this was a family member. Mm-hmm. And so she just turned into a totally different person, and. And then on top of it, I lost my mom in 2010. I also had a abuser in 2010 start to mentally abuse me. Well, by the time it got to June 23rd of 2019, I got locked in my room by my abuser, by a witness, and had three witnesses witness the whole thing. And I got physically abused and mentally abused. Where are you right now, like on the wellness and mindfulness journey? Well, I'm slowly but surely coming back from my emotional abuse and physical abuse. I mean, my abuser still to this day thinks that she did nothing wrong. I understand though. Like, it's stuck, right? Like the way you tell the story. I I can resonate with that because I'm a, a kind of person who remember things by timeline as well. And it's every time you address each incident, that's very traumatized and it stick to you, it will appear like repeatedly. I, I really understand that. It's not easy to get rid of it. Like just have, well, to, have to live with it. Well, um, I am, I am, a, I am getting rid of it. I will be, I am trying to get rid of it, but at the same time it's deep in my soul yeah i'm very sorry to hear that but you got it girl like you're very strong from everything you have been doing let's get into the the thing that you enjoy doing you you told me that you love journalists isn't it oh yes yes i quit my job do i lost my job due to covid covid19 and I, um, I dived bomb directly into journalism. So how come this um, hobbies become your work and why you like it then? Why I like it? Because <laughs> I, um, I was a journalist for 10 years. I've been sharing my story on and off 
mm-hmm. for like 20 years. I published a book right after my mom died. And so, and I'm also a podcast host of three podcasts. And so I, um, that became my part-time job, my part-time income. Now it's become my full-time job. Who, who teach you to do this thing, like three podcasts? I mean, from like writing a book, you search this, everything, or you have a book? I, I taught myself. Ah. I taught myself. Now it's getting to the point where my next book that I'm going to publish, I'm going to do it with a publisher. Mm, so the first one was um, self-publishing? Yep. The second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one, the seventh one, and the eleventh, the eleventh one. And yeah, I have published eleven books so far. Eleven. Oh my gosh. I kudos you on that. I yeah. even, wow. What inspired you to write then? I mean, three podcast hosts, that's already amazing. I host only one podcast, makes me crazy already about finding the content, finding the guests. And I, I mean, I enjoy doing it though. I enjoy to speak with someone like do special and then like bring their expertise on the podcast. However, how do you do all of this by yourself? Or you have a helper? I have an assistant that helps me with one of them i do one of them with her and one of them will get picked back up um, when i finish journalism school ah so right now you are studying journalism yeah right now i'm studying slash doing journalism ah how is different from, from normal writing it's it's more of a research-based writing than it is a creative storytelling writing, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And I, my goal is to be the voice for the voiceless and get the stories of the disabled slash caregivers out there and yeah. So right now, can you like tell me how your days looks like on a daily basis? Well, on a daily basis, um, everything I do focuses around CP. Mm. So CP is the core of imagine a chandelier. Imagine a chandelier and imagine the base of the chandelier being cerebral palsy. So all the arms of the chandelier, let's say eight arms of the chandelier, go off that base. Mm -hmm. And so I get, I'm up at 5.36 a.m. because by 7 a.m., by 7.30, mountain time, I need to be up and functioning and white and bushy tailed. And because I have people coming in to help me at 8, 8 a.m., the earliest 7 30, but primarily 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. And how you organize your work with your daily life? I have a schedule. I have a assistant. I just um, host, ask when. That's all I do. My assistant does the scheduling. I um, gave it to her. I gave it to her 10 years ago. She just does the scheduling. And then I have an automatic system like you do, Calendly, and that's how we roll. So you have been doing podcasts for 10 years already? My main one, my main one has been going strong for 10 years. Wow. I didn't know that. Wow. You're very consistent. I really respect you on that. Well, yeah. So what would you like to inspire other people 
who are listening to this, like entrepreneurship wise or who want to speak more of their own truth? Just get out there and do it. And just, um, if you can do it, just do it in the way you see fit. And then, um, and then don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, my aides walk in the first day they meet me and have, unless they have prior experience with cerebral palsy, they know nothing. They know absolutely nothing about cerebral palsy. And so I'm teaching people about cerebral palsy on a daily basis. Wow. Thank you so much for inspiring everyone. And it's already for you helping other people and also fulfill your soul right now as well, right? Yeah. In case anyone want to follow you, how can they reach out to you then? I'll just Google my name. Just Google my name, Win W-I-N, Charles, C-A-J-R-L-A-S, or they can go to askwin.webelease.com and I um, I will hand that to you to put in the show notes and they can just Google my name or look for Ask Win or um, the artwork of CP or the amazing voices of teachers on every single podcast. Player out there, primarily Ask Win. Ask Win is the most consistent one and the artwork of CP is all about cerebral palsy. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Hey, thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoy the show, you can subscribe here or here. And this is the previous episode. Check it out. See you next time.